This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hi friends, this is Dr. Deepak Meghur and I'm here with yet another case of an intumescent cataract in an elderly patient. The antechamber is extremely shallow. The patient has a pseudo exfoliation as well. The pressures were all right at this point and we did not dilate the patient even during biometry fearing the risk of patient developing pupillary block angle closure glaucoma. On the day of the surgery, the patient was put on IV mannitol. The pressures were once again checked after mannitol and before shifting him to the OR. My strategy in this case would be to perform a two-stage rexus. Uh, the surgery is being performed under tropical anesthesia. And after staining the capsule, I inject about 0.3 ml of 1% preservative-free lidocaine for intracameral anesthesia. I prefer to use dispersive OVD. I am using Orocoat which is a combination of chondritin sulfate and sodium hyaluronate. Uh, this is a viscote-like OVD, uh, the Indian version of it. I prefer dispersive OVD over the cohesive OVD for rexus in these intermittent cataracts since the chamber is uh, well maintained without deepening it much. I puncture the capsule 26G cannula and immediately as soon as I puncture, there is egress of some fluid suggesting some form of spontaneous decompression occurring. I switch to forceps for the rexus. I begin with the tearing technique. And shift to shearing technique once I am sure that the tear is under control. I must concentrate on the way the flap is tearing. I need to shift immediately to the tearing technique if I get the slightest hint that the rexus is not under control. However, the primary rexus was very much under control and we have a nice 3 mm axis here. Now the most critical part, I need to have a comprehensive decompression of the back as the risk of rexus running away still exists during secondary rexus and creation if the bag is not thoroughly decompressed. The swollen lens matter in these peripheral areas are the one which cause a problem and also the lens matter which is behind the nucleus. All of this needs to be removed. In this case, I want to demonstrate a new technique of decompressing the bag uh, using the FACO tip to aspirate the cortex. The machine settings are set for that of a regular cortex aspiration. The swollen lens matter is begun aspirating using the FACO tip. And we can observe that the aspiration is quite efficient and fast when compared to the typical iron day aspiration port uh, which has just 0.9 mm opening. To aid removal of the swollen lens matter from the peripheral portion, the lens dialer in the non-dominant hand is used to rotate the nucleus and this will help us to free up the peripheral subcapsular lens matter. The tip is just held in the central portion and the subcapsular swollen cortex is teased out and then aspirated. Using the second instrument to rotate the nucleus and to mobilize the cortex is necessary since we can't go in with the FACO probe directly under the small rexus opening towards the peripheral part. Once I'm convinced that the bag is decompressed well enough, I proceed to rexus enlargement. Now, since I do not have access to micro scissors at this point, I'm using a needle to nick the rexus margin and raise a flap. I'm using a forceps to hold the flap and then tear it in a controlled manner so that I achieve a rexus of a decent size. Now is the time to FACO. I'm performing the central trench since I find the nucleus is slightly in the bulkier part so that I can get a nice and access to hold the deeper part of the nucleus. So once I have achieved about 50% depth, I bury my FACO tip and begin to chop. Uh, this is my preferred method to chop in such denser nucleus. The tip is buried nice and deep up to the level of the sleeve and now my chopper goes vertically down and then I'm performing the lateral separation. The chopper needs to be deeper plane and perform lateral separation once again to achieve the complete split. The process of nucleus division is similar. You just hold the nucleus, bury it in the central portion and then chop it vertically down and perform lateral separation. 
this process is continued until I have got six pieces. And now I am switching on to the fragment removal mode and these are the settings. Each of these fragments are emulsified at the pupillary plane. The cortex is aspirated. The intraocular lens is implanted into the bag. The OVD both in front and behind the lens is removed. The side ports are hydrated. And that's it, the case is done. Okay, now this is the first day picture. There's a slight corneal haze and the intraocular pressure is 34. Well, I need to remember that this eye had pseudo-exfoliation and a compromised outflow facility is to be expected and the IOP has also shot up probably because of some retained OVD as well. The patient is uh, treated with anti glaucoma medications along with the steroids and on the sixth day, the cornea is cleared. The pressure has dropped down to 14 now, but this patient uh, will be monitored for life for uh, development of glaucoma in future. So to summarize, I'm using this new way of decompressing the uh, capsular bag in intumescent cataracts after doing the initial small rexis. Instead of using a bimanual irrigation aspiration cannula or a Simco cannula, I'm using a FACO tip to aspirate the uh, cortex because I find it much more efficient and faster to do the job. Thank you so much for attention and hope this helps.